a Castle Steam V6 boiler with a Stuart 5A engine, steaming in the garden, a perfect combination. On my traction engine I would use kindling wood to light the fire, but to light this boiler I've decided to use charcoal soaked in white spirit, and the white spirit that I used was some that I'd been cleaning paintbrushes in, hence the red bits you can see in the charcoal. This piece of charcoal refused to leave the shovel. If you are using charcoal soaked in white spirit or paraffin, make sure that you don't throw a lot of paraffin into the firebox with the charcoal. Here's a health and safety warning under no circumstances must you use petrol or anything like that. I lit the final shovel full of charcoal before putting it in the firebox, and this lights the rest of the charcoal in there. Normally on a model steam boiler of this size, I would use a blower on the chimney. Well, it's really a sucker and it's used to draw the fire. But there's just about enough draft with the long chimney on the V6 boiler. But unfortunately, if I shut the fire hole door, the fire goes out. And moving the air bleed makes no difference. As you can see, there is no flame anymore inside the firebox. Until, of course, I relight the fire. The only problem is, it's actually a breezy day today. There's not a gale blowing, which makes a change but the wind across the top of the chimney makes the chimney not draw as well as it should do. Eventually though it settles down and I found that if I nearly shut the fire hole door like this it was acceptable. While I was waiting for the steam to show up on the pressure gauge I thought it was a good idea to fill the boiler almost to the top using the hand pump. In the end I filled it three quarters full, that should be fine. Now I can shut the fire hole door a little further. Once the charcoal is well alight, there's less danger of the fire going out if I shut the fire hole door. And of course now, the drafting is coming from underneath the fire, and this in turn will make the fire burn much more brightly. I haven't put any coal on yet, I'm waiting until the charcoal is fully lit. And this is the time that you need to attend to the lubrication. I'm filling the mechanical lubricator on the pump, for this I'm using steam oil, and I'm also just applying a little bit of steam oil to all the moving parts. This is an artistic shot of the chimney against the backdrop of all the garden greenery. There are birds flying in the sky, the wind has dropped and it's looking good. It's not really an artistic photograph though, I used the camera on autofocus and it focused on the trees rather than the chimney. Now's the exciting part, well calm down it's not that exciting, I'm adding some coal into the firebox on top of the charcoal via the fire hole door. The design of this boiler is really good. For instance, the firebox crown is quite a long way above the top of the fire hole door. And as well as some other internal innovative designs, this boiler allows for a really good depth of fire. And once this coal is all alight, then the steam will be raised very quickly. But there's no rush, it's a nice day and it's good to get outside the workshop. The birds are singing and it's very tranquil here. Nothing's shown on the gauge yet, but very soon things will start to happen. It's always a good idea with a miniature steam boiler to initially raise the steam slowly. That's because all of the metal that's in the boiler expands quite slowly, not all at once. As soon as some pressure showed on the pressure gauge, I opened the blower, which blows a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. Now I'm closing it to almost close because I don't want that much blast. And no, this is not speeded up. This is the speed of steam generation with a Castle Steam V6 boiler. Time to open the steam valve to the pump. And here it is, sizzling nicely and pumping water into the boiler. The pump works OK, I think it's time to attach a steam engine. The steam engine is a Stuart 5A that I worked on a while back. It wasn't in particularly good condition. I fitted reversing gear to it, a mechanical lubricator and a crosshead oiler. As you can see in here, the engine is running very smoothly. A Stuart 5A has a 2.25 inch diameter cylinder and the published specification from Stuart Models website is one and a half horsepower at 80 pounds per square inch. In this clip I'm moving the engine between forward and reverse. I've run this 5A many times on steam and it runs okay, but steam engines always run a lot better on steam. 
The steam test is well overdue on this engine, mainly due to the fact that all through the winter the weather was atrocious. And after the successful steam test it can wing its way across the Atlantic to the owner in America. It really does run well. It's one of the smoothest 5 A's I've ever come across. Look at the speed of it and it's not dancing all over the table, so somehow it's very well balanced. If you look behind it at the water gauge you'll see that the level is dropping, so it's time to just switch on the pump and put some more water in there. By switch on I mean open the steam valve. This is not an electric pump. This steam pump is actually too big for this boiler. It's putting too much water in too quickly and I overfilled it. I always do that. The noise that you can hear is from the steam blower that blows a jet of steam up the chimney but now it's blowing a jet of water up the chimney. I opened the bypass valve so most of the water is being returned to the tank. With a steam pump of this type you do not need to fit a water bypass valve but it's good to have one so you can run the pump to watch it working without filling the boiler. With the bypass valve open all that happens is the pump takes the water from the tank and then it's pumped back to the tank, not into the boiler. I've opened the valve on the boiler to speed up the engine to clear the water excess. This clip shows just how good this boiler is. Its working pressure is 100 pounds per square inch, it's blowing off, the engine's really running fast. These four-way chime whistles are quite big and they use a lot of steam. And as you can see, the pressure is held at 100 pounds per square inch all the time and it's starting to blow off again. Time for a bit of slow motion. Shortly before this a friend of mine arrived and we're having a bit of a chat. My voice is louder than his because I'm near the camera and he's three metres away. That would easily power a 25 foot boat down the river. Would it? Just with that system you could, you could lift it out yeah. when you finish so running it. Have yeah. so you got the blower on? This would be a good plant for a small or medium sized boat, 20 to 25 feet in length. A quick look at the fire tells me that the fire is in excellent order. It's worth mentioning that the exhaust from the engine is not going up the chimney. If that was the case this fire would be white hot. In this clip I've dropped the pressure. I've pumped in quite a lot of water, I haven't got the blower on and the fire is settling down and there's still plenty of power coming from the 5A. By increasing the speed of the pump, more water's also been pumped into the boiler. That's about it for this video. Please stay safe and stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave the video running for a while longer. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.